In this episode, Christian makes a discovery. We kind of have gameplay now. But somehow this isn't enough because... Shmup is all about causing mayhem. So we pull out strange shapes. This little bugger here, right here, right? And things get out of hand. Isn't that the best? <laughs> Mm, hi everybody, welcome. I am Christian. This is Lazy Death Academy. Welcome to this tutorial series where we are making little shmup and this is going so well. Mm, look at this. Last time we did collision detection and it's... Oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? We can collide with enemies, but I think we can do a little better. Right. So now let us do the thing that we're, we're um, like, let's build upon this beautiful uh, base. And let us add, this episode's gonna be a bit chill out, you know, we're just gonna add more stuff now that, that this gate has been opened, this door has been opened now, and we can do beautiful, beautiful gameplay stuff, okay? Let us first begin. Let us first begin with a collision uh, between the bullets and the enemies. I think this is like, like a very simple collision, that will be a lot of fun. Right, so um, we are, let me, let me see where the collision between ship and enemies happens. This is where the collision between sh ship and enemies happened. And I, in this case, I want to do the collision between the bullets and enemies first, because maybe, you know, I'm firing bullets and the enemy's coming at me. And I, if there's bullets actually leaving the muzzle flash of my ship, then I want to check for that collision first. And maybe the enemy will die and maybe that will save me from dying uh, from a collision between the enemy and the ship. So I'm gonna do a collision between ship and bullets. Okay. Hey, here's Christian from the future. So I wrote the wrong comment here. It says um, the collision with ships and bullets. That's obviously wrong. It should be the collision with enemies and bullets. Uh, I will notice this eventually, but way down the line. So I just want to make sure that you know that this is wrong. Okay, so we are going to loop through all of the enemies. Okay. And now for each enemy, inside each enemy, we're gonna loop through all of the bullets. My bull. Bulls. So a loop inside a loop. That's something that we haven't actually experienced yet, but totally something that you can do. Obviously, you can have loop inside a loop. Obviously, if there's a lot of enemies and a lot of bullets, it's gonna be a lot of collision checks, but that's how it works. So we're looping through all of the enemies and for each enemy, we're going through all of the bullets. Each enemy, you're going through all of the bullets. So it's like five enemies and five bullets. It's like 25 collision checks, right? <laughs> but that's how it works. Right. And then we're gonna just co collide a bullet with an enemy. So we're gonna go if collision my n and my bull. If the enemy collides with a bullet, my n, my bull, then and now we're gonna have to find out what happens actually when a bullet collides with an enemy. Now maybe if down the line we're gonna have like enemies that have health and so forth. And it's that's actually a big deal that we're gonna have to actually think about this. But just for now, just for now, like just like very you know, making it really simple. We're just gonna delete the enemy and we're gonna delete the bullet. So we're gonna delete uh, the enemy from my enemies list and we're gonna delete the uh, bullet from our bullet list. Now it's good to have a sound effect for this. So let, let, let us just do a sound effect. Let us just try to maybe something violent and sudden. Or maybe actually, you don't, don't, you don't have to make an explosion. <laughs> That's the perfect sound effect for a collision. Uh, maybe like this, but what about this? Actually, it's good sometimes to have like a gap, like a huge jump between the different volumes. Yeah, see, that, that sounds like, like a... And then we are actually even changing, uh, changing uh, instruments. Yeah, like, you know, like a like a click sound, more of a clicky sound. I think that's good. Mm, with shift, uh, uh, no, with control and clicking on one of the things, 
no, actually shift. It's shift and clicking on one of the things. You can change the entire sound, like entire music, the entire sound effect. You can change it to a completely different instrument. So now it's all red, now it's all um, orange, now it's all yellow. You know, you can change the entire sound into one instrument. I liked how it sounded when it was just like this. Uh, maybe I did. Maybe like this. I'm just like I'm adding some pink notes, some noisy notes in between the uh, the melodic notes. Something like this. I don't know. Sound effect two. Okay. Uh, sound effect two. Let's let's just see how it feels because I think it's difficult sometimes to judge a sound effect from like just hearing it in the sound editor, you actually have to see the, the, the thing happening. All right, so we had a loop inside a loop, and then a statement, if statement inside the, uh, inside the two loops. And you can see now, you can see it by the way, I just wanted to like remind you the, the indentation. So the, all of this is inside a function. So all of, the already start, all of this already starts at one indentation. And then inside the for loop, the first loop we have sec two indentation and then inside the second loop we have three indentation and inside the if statement inside the loop inside the loop inside the function we have four indentation and then it's whole like end 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 <laughs> at the end like three ends but not the fourth end because the fourth end is at the end of the function like yeah the indentations really help you visually see you know what's inside what uh and it gets it's very easy to get confused and like leave one out of the ends otherwise and lose track of where things opening and starting. Okay, so keep in mind you should, and if you have a construction like this, you should have four spaces uh, uh, in front of the contents of the if statement. The inside of the if statement should have four indentations, four spaces in front of it. Okay, okay, let's start it. But now there is not enough enemies, right? It would be nice if the enemies were, we had more enemies to shoot at. <laughs> I wonder more enemies to shoot at. So what if, what if we just add another enemy whenever we shoot an enemy? And for that, let's, let me just actually do a function that spawns an enemy. Function spawn n. Just like a spawn me a random enemy somewhere. And then we're gonna put this stuff into that. We're gonna spawn n. We're gonna already call this function here already at the beginning in, in start game. And then we're gonna have sp spawn n. And in this um, function, we're gonna paste this stuff in that we just copied over. We're gonna create a little helper variable, my n. Uh, and we're gonna put an empty object inside and we're gonna add it some y, x, y, spr. And we're going to add this to my enemies list. If we just run this, you can already see what will happen. Oh, nothing will happen <laughs> because I want to also launch this when I kill an enemy. Okay, so this basically resets the enemy on the top of the screen. That's not something, something I necessarily want. So maybe I want to randomize its position. So first of all, actually at the Y position, maybe it should be minus eight. So it spawns off screen. And the X position is something I'm gonna go R&D 128. Actually 120 is something I want. Because 128, it might spawn off screen actually a little bit. So yeah. Okay. We have, we, we, we kind of have gameplay now. It's crazy. We have gameplay guys. <laughs> Okay, something I don't like is the, I don't like the sound effect. So let's let's work on the sound effect a little bit. I don't like how it suddenly it stops. Maybe. Ah, yeah, that that's good. That's I, I like the yeah. So it's more of an explosion. Right, but you can see already a problem here. You can already see, like, this is good, but you can see already a problem that is coming up, and that's something that we're gonna have to think about later. Maybe not in this episode, because it's gonna be a bit a lot for this episode. We, this looks, this looks bad. 
it, it just disappears. Like everything just disappears, right? It's just like they blink out of the existence. They should explode. We need a big old explosion, huge explosion. Uh, that's something that is very important for shmups, I feel. I feel, um, you know, a shmup is all about causing mayhem. Uh, and so we're going to have to think about, and that's going to be its own episode, we're going to have to develop a way to make explosions. We're going to have to think about explosions. So this is going to be a big to-do in our to-do list. Actually, I'm going to start a to-do list right now in, in our code, something I like to do. Tab number zero all the way up top. A comment, to-do. And here I can put in things that I want to do. I want to have explosions. This is a huge deal. I want to have explosions, but not just explosions. Um, I want to ha go have hit reactions. Uh, and again, this is something I already talked about. Uh, but again, like this general top view thing uh, uh, that we have to think about that I think a lot of um, people will miss about about making games any type any type of game uh, where the shooting involved especially uh, i already talked about you know how remember how we added the f muzzle flash to our shooting and I remember what i said it's like kind of like a stage a new actor enters the stage and it shouldn't just blink into existence you know the bullets shouldn't just blink into existence they should be somehow, there should be some kind of visual cue that um, uh, kind of explains to us the logic of why and how this, this thing appeared on the scene. It shouldn't just like blink into existence. And it's the same thing when the opposite happens, when things disappear for whatever reason. We should have some kind of visual clue, some kind of like theatrical action, some kind of animation maybe that explains why things disappeared, where they went, you know, what happened to them. So like an enemy just disappearing is bad and it's bad because it just like blinks away and we don't know where it went. Like, I guess we can maybe imagine that it was blown into pieces, but we just didn't see it happen. Same with the bullets. The bullet hit an enemy, okay. But like, what happened to the bullet, right? Like we have to maybe see the bullet burst into pieces, you know, we need to see kind of like an impact effect impact effects explosions uh, enemies blinking like reacting to being hit these are things that are so crucial so important to schmutt to any kind of game that involves shooting at things it's a physical spectacle that is being uh, shown on the screen and right now that wasn't an a spectacle. The sound effects already help us getting the, us there. Don't don't get me wrong. We can tweak the sound effects, so that's good. But we want to see the spectacle. We want to see the huge explosion. And alas, it's not there. But we're gonna take care of the explosion later on. I first maybe want to uh, go uh, to do other things today. I just want to take care of simple things. I was talking about things like the invulnerability state, right? So I want to maybe take care of that. So let us do um, like a new variable. I know that we've put a lot of things inside the ship objects. I don't want to put too much stuff in a ship object. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to set the lives to four and I'm going to say inval. I'm going to call this inval. I'm, I'm going to set it to zero. Okay. So the invulnerability state is something that when you get hit, your ship should like flash visually flash for you know you know 30 30 frames i don't know we're gonna figure out for some amount of seconds and when it's flashing the collision detection no longer works uh you are invulnerable for uh, from bullets because you just got hit uh and then you don't want to get immediately hit again right like you you're invulnerable for for a while and then once that runs out you're you're normal again so that's something that i want to implement next before we get to, to explosions of four don't worry we're gonna get there eventually, right? Um, and so here, when we collide with enemy, I actually don't want to destroy the enemy. I actually want to just keep on living. The enemy want to keep on living, and you can see immediately the problem that will come up. What happened? What happened? Well, this is exactly the problem that we're trying to solve when the invulnerability state. What happened? We have four lives. We have four lives immediately dead, insta-kill, 
Why? Well, because there's a collision between the enemy. We lose one life. Okay, and then we do nothing. So we finish the frame, next frame begins, the enemy moves a little bit, but not too much. And we have the same collision that we had before, again, we're losing another life. And then again, and again, until we run out of lives in four frames, that happens in, you know, it's, it's just a blink of an eye. And then we're just immediately dead. We don't lose just one life, we lose all, lose all of the lives because the collision, because four collisions happen, right? And you can see closely, if you look closely at the lives, you can see them going down, right? If I have a lot of lives, let's, let me give you, let's, let's give 10 lives. Then we can maybe survive this. <laughs> now it took longer. Let's go 30 lives. <laughs> now we survived this. Okay, right. So this is why we want to introduce this idea of this unvulnerability state. And I already created this unvul variable. And I'm gonna set this unvul variable to let's go let's go with 30. And once and the collision with the ship and enemies only happens if the invulnerability vari variable is um, it's gonna be like a countdown timer, right? I'm gonna set it to 30 and it's gonna count down from 30 back to zero. And we're only gonna check for collision detection when the timer is back at zero. So we're gonna hear this entire collision with the with uh, the enemy uh, with enemies and the ship. We're gonna wrap this all in an if statement. And something we can do now is we can because now the indentation changes. We're gonna select all of this. We're gonna press tab, and we're gonna add an indentation to this entire block. Very very useful. So we're gonna go if invol equals zero. If it's double equals, again, important, double equals, not just single equals, that's assigning a value, double equals comparing two values, then, and only then we're gonna do the collision detection. Now we're gonna run this now. It worked, we lost only one life, but the problem now is we are now completely invulnerable to any other enemies. <laughs> Actually, I, something I wanted to do is I'm gonna spawn a new enemy spawn n when an enemy leaves the screen and just to show you off this this problem so we're gonna go an update function and here where enemies are leaving the screen here this is where we move the enemies and here's where enemy leaves the screen because we go too far down and in this case i'm gonna spawn a new enemy just so you know there's always one enemy on the screen man you want to spawn good so you can see I hit, got hit by the enemy once and now I'm uh, forever unvulnerable. And the reason the, for that is, the problem for that is, is that I am uh, not counting down the invulnerability variable. So that's something that we have to do now. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's here. I can do it right here, I think. Uh, invul equals invul minus one. We could also go minus equal one, like this. Um, the only problem is it could get lower than zero. Uh, let's do it like this. Let's do it like, now I have to think a little bit. So if, if invul equals zero, then else, if it's not zero, uh, then we decrease it. And just to make sure, we're going to make it so invul is equal or smaller than zero. Just to make sure, just in, co in case for some reason invul gets lower than zero for some reason, uh, then in this case, we're going to still do the collision detection. Okay? All right, let's do this. Let's get hit. So we got hit now. Let's get hit again. Work. Cool. But now, obviously, it was a bit difficult for us to judge this if we were invulnerable or not. We kind of had to check it by, by actually colliding with an enemy. So I want to actually, depending on if the invulnerability state is actually happening right now, I want our ship to blink. So we kind of have to put a bit of an animation. Something we can do here is let us go to where we draw the enemy, where we draw the ship, I mean. Uh, go to the draw function here. Here's where I draw my ship. Something we can do here is something like if invul is greater than zero, then uh, actually if it's smaller equal, no wait, I want, yeah, if it's greater than zero, if we were counting down, 
No, wait, wait, wait. I have to think about it. I have to think about it. So I want just this ship to disappear. Just to disappear when it's invulnerable. So if it's invulnerable is equals... So we're only going to draw it if the invulnerability is um, smaller or equals zero, right? If uh, there is no countdown happening, no invulnerability countdown happening, then we're drawing the ship. And we, when there's a countdown happening, we're just not going to draw any ship. So we're just going to disappear for a while. Bam. We're gone and now we're back. Okay. So now for the short period that we're gone, I want during that period not to just be gone, but I want the ship to be blinking. And that's going to be a bit difficult. How are we going to pull this off? Blinking. I mean, there's a simple solution for this. We're probably going to have to invent a variable. Let's be, let's be honest. We're going to have to invent a variable. But something I wanted to introduce for a long time now, and something that is, I think might make sense to do now, is you see how we have blink t, right? We have like this little variable for the blinking text. Um, I want to introduce us. I don't want to introduce a new variable called t, and t is going to be zero, and that's something that we're going to set up in the init function, and then here in update function, we're going to just add one to t. T is going to be like this little helper variable that will just count the number of frames. And actually, we're going to even make it so that when we start the game, we set t to zero. Just so, you know, at the beginning of the game, t is going to be zero. So t actually counts the number of frames that the game has been running for. Okay, uh, let me put it here, not, not so. So the ship definition is all one block. Okay, t is equal, equal zero. And in update function, we always add one to t. Now, something we can do now is we're going to do an else. And this is now the part where we're invulnerable. This is the invulnerable state. And for example, here, just like to make sure, like here we just draw the ship, but we're not going to draw the, um, the flame. So we can see now, now I got hit, and now I'm in a vulnerable state, and you, we didn't see the flame, OK? So now here, I want to uh, my ship to be blinking somehow. Um, Blinking means, you know, something that is on, off, on, off, on, on, off, off, on, off. And I think we can use a function from math that you might be hating because it's difficult to understand. But I think here it's kind of like really nice to use. And that's the sine function. The sine function, the sine wave. You maybe heard about this before. This little bugger here, right here, right? The sine function, S-I-N. Um, this is... In math, it's not a very, like in math classes when you were to, went to school, that's not a very uh, well-liked function because man, look at this, there's like pi involved. Oh man, what is this even? I don't, uh, and then you have like radians and oh man, that's, that's very complicated. Um, but we're just, gonna, we're just gonna ignore this for a while. We're just gonna ignore that there's pi involved. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just not, not that important. Something that I want to fo us to focus on is that it's, a, it's, it's this little wavy line. It's this wavy line that I guess is kind of like really nice. And that wavy line is really easily exploitable whenever we have something that blinks or, or, or bobs, you know, or like, you know, just like waves or something like this. That's kind of like a really nice function for any kind of animations. Um, that we that will come up every now and then, and that's that's something that I'm going to exploit right now. Something that to that we keep in mind is that this function returns a value. You uh, that, that, see, that's the same thing as math in math, right? We have a function that returns a value, and and that wavy line that's the return value. So you give it some kind of um, number, you feed it some number, and depending on the number, it will return a values. Uh, between one and minus one, it will like os oscillate between one and minus one. That's the resulting values, one and minus one. That's something to keep in mind. Mi one and minus one. So maximum number one, minimum number minus one, and in middle we have zero. Okay, let's let's try to utilize this function to make the blinking happen. So I'm gonna do something like if sine. There is this. It, we have a, just a sign function of, in, in PQ8. It's just there. It it's turns green immediately. And now we can feed it some number. I'm going to feed it t. t is, as I said, you know, just the amount of frames we had so far. I'm just going to feed it t. And we're going to say if sign t is smaller than zero. And as, as we remember, this, you know, this wavy line, maximum number one, 
number is minus one and in the center in the dead center between the between the two waves there's zero so if it's basically like on off on off on off we're just um, drawing the ship if the wave dips underneath zero if the wave dips underneath zero then we're going to draw the ship okay then, and here inside we just draw the ship and the flame as always and now this probably won't work but we're going to figure this out so I'm going to see the collision. It's always invisible. And now it's the problem is like, like just like basically what we are feeding into sign. Uh, let's just divide it by 10. So inside the parentheses of the sign function, we have the T value and divided by 10. I think that that will maybe a better result. Yeah, there it is. It's blinking. Um, the reason for this is that the sign function uh, in Pico 8 accepts a number from 0 to 1. So one entire wave is 1. All right, I have to go to, to, to paint for this. So you see how this, we have this wavy line, right? Um, so in Pico 8, this wavy line, uh, we have to talk about what, what kind of values Pico, uh, the sign function in Pico 8 accepts. So we're going to delete all of the ugly pies. I, I personally, I, I find Pi in interesting, but also Pi is very intimidating and and not a lot of people kind of like understand what Pi is for and that's okay. Uh, so we're not gonna actually think about Pi for a while. Like Pico 8 is kind of like very like, don't think about Pi too much. Um, and this here at this point in the wave um, is, is zero. So if you feed zero into sine, you're gonna get zero, right? This part <clears throat> at the end of the wave, that's one. And this is 0 0.5. And this is 0 0.25. Oh man, I, don't, don't you love my, don't you love my beautiful, beautiful handwriting Use, using a mouse, right? So basically every time we go through an entire wave, it's an integer value. So one, and then, you know, next wave is going to be two and three and so forth. And we were feeding, feeding integer values into, into the sign function, so it always returns zero because it always, always skipped an entire wave, so it's also always invisible or visible, whatever. And yeah, it was always invisible because it always returns zero, and we're only drawing a ship if it's lower than zero. Um, so in order to get you know all the richness of the wave, uh, we had to divide the integer value through 10 or something. To kind of derive values that are 0 0.25, you know, 0 0.5, and so forth. Basically, to get into these kind of position of the wave, because we were always at these positions where the, the entire wave was over. But in order to get all the in between values, we have to have to actually divide it, the integer, we just have to divide by some number. And any number will work. The more, the bigger the number we're dividing by, um, the slower the blinking will be. Right? So let us, let's do the test here. So I'm going to run this. Um, I'm actually going to do this so we can always see the blinking. Uh, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So I'm just going to go something like this. I'm just going to edit this out. We're always going to see the blinking now. I always want to see the blinking. And then I'm going to comment all of this out. For now. I just want to always see the, the blinking. Okay, so you can see the blinking now, right? There's a blinking happening. So that was 10. Let's make it divided by five. Now it's faster. We divide it by a smaller number now. But if you divide it by the higher number, it will be slower. So if we divide by by 100, there is blinking, but it's very, very, very slow, right? So now we can like figure out what a, what a good blinking is. I feel like, yeah, a little bit faster might be better. What about three? Yeah, maybe that's, that's even more what is what give me like okay divided by one actually won't work because now we only have integer values so now we're never actually gonna we're gonna see it blink by by two or something and oh man it's it's too fast by three yeah maybe something hmm. i feel three felt kind of good this is a bit too too harsh something you can also do is you because right now the when it's blinking the ship is disappearing for the same amount of time that it is visible uh, but you can shift the the balance a little bit so maybe it's uh, 
visible for less amount of time. Like so, there's like a bit of a rhythm happening here. And you can you can use this by shifting this um, this uh, the zero here up and down. So for example, if it's lower than zero point five, now the ship is going to be visible for longer. Right? Uh, if we're gonna sh go divide by ten, you can see it more clearly. See now it's like it disappears for a short amount of time and then it's visible like beep beep beep. It just like blips out a little bit. Uh, and you can do the opposite by going like smaller than minus 0 0.5, shift in the other direction. Now it's actually invisible for a long time and, and only appears for a short time. Let's go back to 0 0.3. Yeah, yeah. What about other way? No, that's not good. I like this. I like this. Yeah, maybe it's a bit too hectic though. Let's see. Uh, and this is just like tweaking, and I really like this about PQA that you can just quickly go from between code and how it looks like. So you can uh, quickly like uh, that's too much. Nope. Mm. That's weird. That's, that it makes such a big difference, but I guess it makes sense. Yeah, maybe maybe just like this is good. I don't want it to to um, blink too too quickly because that kind of feels odd. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that's good. I think that's I I like that. Yeah. Okay. I think I like that. And you know you can experiment. You can put in your own values in here. But I think I like this, so I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna reconstruct our if statement here. This is invulnerability state. Right. So I'm just making sure that we kind of understand. So if there's no invulnerability countdown. In this case, we're just going to draw the ship. But there, if there is an like, else statement, if there is an invulnerability countdown, then we're going to uh, do this sinus thing happening. And if the sinus is, is below a certain value, uh, then we're going to draw the sprite. Fix a little bit in the indentation problem here. OK, something like this. So now you can see <clears throat> when I get hit. I blink for a second. I think I blink for too short. I think the invulnerability state should be longer. So I'm going to increase it from 30 frames to 60 frames, two full seconds. Yeah, that kind of feel, felt, feels better. Okay. So now you can see I can get hit by the enemy, but I... Um, <laughs> but I uh, I won't die immediately because uh, I enter this in invulnerability state. Okay, and I'm not, now I want to address the thing, the, one of the third things that I had uh, last time in the, uh, in the doggy zone. I don't like how the shooting works because it works like this. You have to press the button and you have to release the button. So you have to keep mushing the buttons to have like a good fire rate. You can also keep the button pressing, like press, but then it's like the first shot comes out, you know, separate from each other and then you get the rapid fire. I want to have, like if I hold down the button, I want to have a nice spaced stream of shots. Um, all right, so let's do that. Now I'm going to actually use, uh, I'm going to need a, a new uh, variable for this. That's right. Uh, actually, ball x and ball y we don't need anymore. Huh? We can actually get rid of some of the uh, 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 variables here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go like a ball, um, I'm going to call this bull timer, right? I'm going to set it to zero. And the idea is that in the update function here, well, first of all, I want this to not to be BTNP because that caused this kind of like in, in discrepancy where sometimes it shoots, shoots an individual shot and sometimes like if you keep it pressed, then the shots come in rapid uh, succession. That's caused by the fact that we uh, switched it to B BTNP here. We're going to return to BTN for a while. 
I'm gonna see what happens there. Oh yeah, baby! Is that the best? <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is awesome. Oh, I love how they. Oh, now I'm getting a lot of enemies. <laughs> this is great. There's, a, I think, a bug because we start k k uh, hitting enemies that are off screen and then we get more enemies, I think. <laughs> I don't know what happens, but somehow we can now get a lot of enemies. That's really cool. I think it's a little bit of a bug here, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, now we're firing a bullet at every frame that in which uh, the button is pressed. That's a little bit too much. Or let's say that was fun, but maybe like that's something that happens later in the game. Maybe it depends on the shot. So maybe I want to slow this a little bit down. So that's why, well, that's why I created this new variable. So I'm gonna go if bull timer uh, equals zero, or like let's do it the same thing as before. If it's smaller than or equals zero, then and only then we're gonna actually uh, we're gonna actually run this code and 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 shoot the bullet. Now, if we shoot the bullet, I want to actually start like a count, like a cooldown, basically a countdown timer. I'm gonna do like something like really slow. So I'm gonna set it to 30 for now. We're gonna dial it, dial it down later on. But just like to let you know, okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna count down now, and then here at the end, after the button function, we're gonna go bull timer minus equal one. Uh, not inside the if statement, outside of the if statement. Very important. You you don't want to have this inside of the if statement. So the bull timer always counts counts down, and if uh, the pull timer is uh, if you shoot the bullet, then it's got reset to 30. So now, if I hold it, you see that the bullet is firing at at a steady pace. And if I mash the button, it doesn't actually affect the speed of the bullet. Now, the speed is independent of how quickly I mash the button. And you know, this is a bit of a design philosophy, like a lot of old arcade games, especially in Japan, uh, Japanese arcade games. Uh, previously, it was like, you know, the sh sh shot frequency was actually tied to how quickly you mash the buttons because a lot of the Japanese players and Japanese designers considered this guy uh, like an important skill. How quickly can you press the button? Um, I think that's okay for arcades because arcades are have like these very juicy mashy buttons and and you have like a lot of control of you know it's like it's like it's, it's, it's fun to mash that button so that was okay. Um, I think on keyboards because a lot of people would play this on keyboard and even on on controllers like mashing a button you know for a while it's okay but afterwards you know it's it's really straining your 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 hands and it's it's not a pleasant experience in a, in, a, in a long term and in the end that's not something that we're actually going to be testing as a skill we're not testing how quickly people can mash the button we're actually testing how well can they avoid the button uh, the bullets and you know how well can they shoot down the enemies so i think it's okay for modern shmups i think it's okay and and, and worthwhile to pursue that we're not actually tying the bullet frequency to how quickly you can mash the button that there is like a set frequency at which we are firing and you know you just keep the button pressed and as long as you keep the button pressed the uh the bullets are coming out uh we can maybe think about you know maybe how differently you know what difference is between mashing the button and holding a button we can maybe check and maybe other things change depending on on, on that there's games for example where mash if you mash the buttons then the, your ship is actually moving at a high speed and if you keep the button pressed, then you get a stronger shot, but the sh ship is moving um, slower. You can maybe think about that. Uh, but yeah, for now, I just want to have like a steady pace of bullets. Now, 30 frames, like the uh, uh, cooldown at 30 is, is crazy slow. Uh, so now I want to experiment with how low I want to get it. Oh, four feels nice. Let's get all the way down to one. Okay, that's now that feels more like a laser, right? Like it's now it's no longer individual bullets, but like a laser. And I kind of like this, but I don't like how you get like this geometric st stair pattern. I think that's a bit too extreme. So I'm just gonna go up. This is good. This is, feels good. 
Yeah, 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 no, I think three or four feels good. Three or four is something I want. I think this is still okay. But if you get look something like ten, right? Uh, nah. And again, this is something I'd already talked about and um, um, that's something that also like important to re to um, recognize. I talked about, for example, how it's more fun to shoot a bigger bullet than it is to sh shoot a smaller bullet. The same thing about speed of bullets, the same thing about number of bullets. It's more fun to shoot more bullets than to shoot uh, less bullets. It's more fun to shoot bullets at a higher frequency uh, and it's more fun to shoot, you know, faster bullets. Um, so we are now kind of like tweaking variables. Now we have a new variable at our hand, which is, allows us to kind of control the frequency of the bullets. And that's just not a fun frequent, frequency. Of, that's just like a bit, uh, okay, yeah, sure. I mean, you could do it, it's fine. I'm not gonna like second, like, it's really, but I think it's worthwhile if you can do it. Just be generous, just like give people an ability to just, you know, just put a lot of bullets on the screen. I think that's, that's just like more fun and more of a better of an experience. All right. Uh, one last thing I just noticed. Uh, I, we are colliding with bullets with enemies, but actually the score doesn't go up. So let us make the score go up. Let us start the score at zero. Uh, let us seek out the collision between bullets and enemies. Where is that? Where is that? That's going to be an update function. Uh, ship and bullets, ship and enemies. There we go. This is where, no, this is the ship and enemies. This is the ship and bullets. No, that's actually not wrong. That's not, sh <gasps> the comment is wrong. It's not ship and bullets, it's enemy uh, and bullets. Oh man, I hope nobody got conf confused by that. All right, so this is where we hit an, uh, uh, when we delete the enemy and this is where the score goes up by, let's go, let's make it go up by one because we know that there's problems. So yeah, now the score actually accurately reflects how many enemies we have killed. And all right, this is gonna be the end of the episode. We just did the same things that we actually did in a, in a, in a doggy zone, making things happen based on collisions. But we also set us up a new goal, which is gonna be coming in this next episode, which is gonna be about explosion and generally hit reactions. But again, that's something that we're gonna talk about the next time around. For now, let us move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone, where I give you some goals for you to uh, to try to achieve in order to get some, you know, your own experience with the code, not just like listening to me to blabber about the code. This time, the doggy challenges, the doggy zone challenges are gonna be, well, we're kind of getting into this pattern, and I think it's a good pattern, where we are going to say like, okay, I want you to actually try to do the explosions. How, can you find out a way of do the, doing the explosions? There's two ways that I think it might be worth pursuing that you might want to try out. First way is just to make this explosion sprite and just play a sprite animation. The way we had, for example, here, this little flame, just spawn particles that this and sprite animation that just plays out and then disappears when the animation is over. Like a little explosion animation, play that animation in the spot where the enemy was. And when the animation is over, it disappears and that's it. The second type of, of explosion you could try is something like the muzzle flash. You know how the muzzle flash we have? You know, when you press and the muzzle flash flashes out and disappears. Well, you could maybe also create an object or an array of objects that is our explosions basically, but just like a circle that just, you know, gets big and then maybe small again or something. Or just maybe it just gets big and disappears, you know, just like a circle that uh, that grows. Uh, that's gonna will be a, a good second type of explosion that you could try. And if that's just like, oh man, these, these, these things seem complicated. Something I, I can, like a third thing I would maybe, maybe suggest is what if, what if the enemy changes sprite when you hit them, right? Now, what if there is an enemy sprite that is just completely white and you turn, you just change the sprite into completely white when the enemy gets hit? Just like to, so the enemy flashes white 
for a second or so, or for a couple of frames. So you can kind of feel the explosions in that way. Like it's not just exploding, but maybe just like uh, turning into, into white. That would be also a possibility. I just wanted you to try something um, with the existing tool set that we have. Just gonna see, like, because that's often what you do. You have a goal and you have some skills and you're gonna try to achieve something with the skills that you have, which may be not necessarily, you know, perfect for the goal, but, you know, just it's pursuing some goals with, with the skills that you have. And I think we already have a lot of skills that you can use to achieve this goal, to make the enemies explode. Same thing, by the way, for getting hit. So if you get hit by the enemy, maybe also there's gonna be a cool effect, maybe, you know, uh, a little animation or something, maybe, you know, like a Mega Man, pew, 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 you know, <laughs> there's the bullets flying out. Something, come up with some cool effect and see if you can make it work. And if you can make it work, there's always the Discord where you can post your results. I think it's, it's gonna be exciting to see what, you, what kind of, what kind of cool effects you guys come up with. I'm gonna create my own uh, explosion in the next episode and we're gonna see, you know, we're gonna compare results in the next episode, okay? All right, and this is gonna be the moment where I will also say a big, big, big thank you, big shout out to the Coffee Crew. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. And that's right, my ladies and gentlemen, this was this episode where we kind of did some collision detection, now things will look a little better, but we also set ourselves some goals for the future where we absolutely see the need, the pressing need to create beautiful, beautiful explosions. And that's something that comes up in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.